Hey there, I'm Russ, sailing vessel Tautog, location Jacksonville, Florida, on the Ortega River. Episode 64.1, because it's a quickie, we're going to do this in one take. I'm not going to edit the video in any way. I'm just going to roll through and then put it on the YouTube right away as it is, because I just don't really have time. I've got to do some mass climbing today. But the question was, uh, could we see some more of the galley? Okay, and, uh, and uh, a little more details on the fiberglass, or the epoxy product that I use. And we'll do that, so stand by. Let's go down the steps. The first thing I'll point out is that I'm very happy to have the doors back on the cupboard below the sink. I don't think anybody in this planet doesn't like the sight of freshly varnished teak with shiny brass fittings that are old. So, I like it. And I just got that all touched up with varnish yesterday, but I digress. The galley, this part was done some time ago. So the fridge is a normal refrigerator that you get for a couple hundred bucks out of Best Buy or Walmart. It doesn't have to be a special marine fridge if you do it this way. It's powered from an inverter, which is over here. That's a 700 watt inverter from Renogy. The AC power cable is running um, in my normal route path to behind this, uh, the sink. And you'll see back there there's two receptacles. One is marked shore power and one's marked inverter power. I don't know if you can see that. And I'm, I'm on shore power at the moment, just because. Um, and uh, the, the countertop turned out pretty good. This used to have an open hatch, just like that. But I blinked it off, did a lot of work, that took a lot of time to uh, put on the counter, uh, fix up this countertop. The stove is a normal Dickinson stove, I wouldn't recommend it, um, only because the customer service wasn't that good. I mean, you pay $1,500 for a damn stove and they did not include the gimbals, the little, the little hinges on the sides that allow it to spin. It doesn't come included, and I'm thinking, holy smokes. Anyway, no bitching. So uh, this is just storage. Uh, the previous owner had a microwave stuffed into there. This is just where I keep my tea and junk like that. And you notice all the plastic bags. Well, I'll bet everybody in America collects these plastic bags. <laughs> I use them because my oils and my olive oils back there, they flap around and bounce around when they run away. So I use this as padding material and to store the bags. Okay, dry storage here, dry storage there. And existing sink from uh, when I bought the boat and two new faucets. Okay. This is from the foot pump. The foot pump, assuming I open this valve, you know, and I have got my foot on the foot pump down here. Squish, 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 squish. That's what a foot pump is for, so that when your battery's dead or you're trying to conserve power or for whatever other reason, you can get water manually out of the tank. The foot pump is just a cheaper one, $25 foot pump, not the high-end one, but I could always buy a better one if I wanted. And I mounted it on what I'll call a permanent piece of deck plug, because this portion of the deck is going to be easily removable, and it's going to get replaced with new plywood, hopefully in a week or two. But I, you know, you're not going to want to mess with the installation of the foot pump every time you lift the deck plug. So, I went like that. And I painted it blue just because I had some blue. Now. Let's talk about the fiberglass. Correction, the epoxy. This is an epoxy top. It's the exact same stuff as this. It's the exact same thing I used in the in the head on the foot on the deck and the head up there. Same stuff. It doesn't have to be brown. It can come in any color you like. The uh, shop sells tons and tons of different colors for um, for mixing, and this is what I used. I used tabletop epoxy. It's got a part A, it's got a part B, like the others. You'll notice they're pretty much uh, at the exact same level in the jugs, and that's because you mix it one-to-one. -one. Uh, contrast that with laminating epoxy, which comes with, uh, this is a three-to-one blend I bought. And it's, uh, again, that's the epoxy that you mix with a fiberglass cloth, and you can do structural stuff and all that. So, they each have their own purpose. The tabletop epoxy, is what I used for the galley counter. Again, you mix it one to one and you uh, stir it really, really well and apply. So one thing the uh, folks in the uh, store where I bought these fiberglass products, and I'll tell you where I got them soon, um, 
one thing they reminded me is that the most common uh, failing that they see when people have trouble with any epoxy product is that you don't mix it well enough. The part A and the part B, they have to be thoroughly mixed together or it just doesn't cure. And probably almost anybody who's messed with it has encountered a batch or two that just doesn't want to cure. So, I took, you know, to do this, I used the uh, little graduated containers that they just gave me at the shop because I was buying so much stuff. And I, you know, it's, it's got the graduations on it and I just measured you know, part A and then part B and stirred and stirred for five minutes. Then I added the tinting color and then I went to work. The pot time is about 20 minutes max. Now where did I get it? From this company here. Fiberglass Coatings Inc. They're physically in St. Petersburg, Florida. But they've got a website here and they've got a phone number and uh, they really were top shelf guys. I, I think I would give them, you know, two thumbs up for being, you know, for being straight talking, for not trying to sell you junk you don't need, anything like that. So one thing I had considered was um, going with gel coat. And the guys asked me a lot of good questions, and they asked me, well, how did you build the, subs, uh, the subsurface? And I said, well, it's epoxy. It's uh, this laminated epoxy. And they say, oh, dear. You know, they say gel coat won't necessarily stick to all types of epoxy. Gel coat is basically a polyester resin, and there's vinyl ester, there's polyester, oh my gosh, and there's epoxy, and I don't fully understand the differences technically. Um, but, but there are differences, and I know that gel coat doesn't um, adhere well to anything except polyester. So, I, because I had considered gel coat to go here um, on the counter, but I made a decision to no, just go with epoxy here and epoxy there. And I use the leftover in the head. And I still have a little bit more in case I want to do the... And I have a little bit more in case I want to do the, the uh, counter in the head. So that's that. So one thing more I'm going to show you is a different topic. The toilet. I want to give a shout out to Ogo Toilets. This is a composting head. If you've not had one before, uh, but are considering a composting head, this is one I think uh, I would recommend the most highly. I like it better than the nature's head. It's so much easier to clean. And it's basically like a litter box for people. I don't mind showing you this stuff. There's nothing in it right now. It's clean and empty. That's where the solids go. This is where the urine goes. And if you pick it up, you can, you can imagine how this thing works. There's a bottle to collect the urine. There's a big drum to collect the solids so it's very simple to use and I and again the company really treated me right I had a concern because the agitator is operated by an electric motor and I'm going oh my god something with wire is that something that can break when I'm far 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 away and those guys um, and girls uh, up at uh, Ogo Toilets sent me a, a replacement for every single electrical component on that um, toilet, you know, and they didn't have to do that, but they did it, and uh, they're stand-up folks. So I think they're based in Ohio. I'll double check that before I post the video. But uh, I thought, I thought, you know, they they treated me the way I think I would treat my customers, and I think they did a stand-up job. So I'd recommend them highly. One thing about the tabletop epoxy is that this surface came out pretty good. It's possible, however, depending how you saw me apply it with my hands, and that's what the guys recommended there. But when I was doing this tabletop, um, it came out okay, and from a distance it looks fine. But if you get in close, you can see little marks, little little pimples and dimples and things like that. That's because there are bubbles that kept forming during the curing process, and it's not catastrophic. It still works just fine. Yeah, so my only suggestion would be that if you're going to tackle a tabletop epoxy job, it's not hard to do, but I would definitely say you, you start mixed with a very, very tiny amount on a scrap sheet of plywood and do one or two coats, kind of get the feel for it, whether you get bubbles, how to apply it, you know, and just practice before you plunk down a lot of money because this stuff is not cheap. It's probably over $100 to buy the tabletop epoxy components. So, so. Anyway, guys, uh, that's that. I'm getting set to go climb the mast, and, and honestly, just like two minutes before I started filming this, my television fell down. It had been mounted right there, and it, the screws appeared to have just ripped out completely, and I'm going, well, holy shit. 
So now I've got to figure out, well, what am I going to do with that? Anyway, we'll figure something out. Maybe I don't need a TV that badly. <laughs>